Welcome back to the long endurance fest that is this year's E3 recap. We're all still hanging in there. Barely. Barely. And Ronnie is making sure all the listeners are are still very much at attention. I was actually about to be really creepy about that, and then you you brought it up, so now I can't. Oh, I'm still watching. Yes, 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 he is. Just as, as the song says. So we've we've gone most of the way through. We've got three more to go. So we're gonna go right into the PC gaming show. And I just know that for me, I did not pay any attention to the PC gaming show. So for those of you that did, y- you have fun. Enjoy. First one that I saw that looked kind of interesting personally to me was Satisfactory by Coffee Stain Studios. Looked kind of like a Minecraft game with factory building. Kind of looked interesting. Uh, Another one I saw, Brian, you should look into this. It is uh, The Sinking City, which is a Lovecraftian game. Ooh. It, it is basically Arkham it is a, just a good old Arkham game. And I have no desire to play this, but Brian, I know that's right up your alley, so you may want to have a look at that. I I will. Uh, anything else that I saw? Oh, the only other thing that really like caught my eye was because we can't have enough Battle Royale games now. There is another one called Realm Royale, but it's, um, oh, no, it's not Realm Royale. It's uh, Rapture Rejects, and it's being done by Cyanide and Happiness, which is a web comic, <laughs> yes. web comic. Oh. Oh, It yeah. is a top-down perspective battle royale, and definitely got the best reaction from the crowd, and it just looks stupid as hell, and <laughs> a total parody of the battle royale games, and that, that would be... Fun, fun, just for the, just for the laughs. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have much anything else. Is there anything else here? Well. No. No, not really. <laughs> Everything okay. else was just a whole bunch of games that's like, yeah, okay, okay. Okay, Just Cause 4 again, all right. Hitman 2, okay. So, at the same time as the PC press conference... There was another press conference, which is what I have written down that I paid more attention to. Limited Run Games had their E3 press conference. Are any of you familiar with them? No. Yeah, okay. no, no, no. Limited Run Games is a company that gets the rights to do physical releases for indie titles. Oh. And releases them on consoles. Um, they do a bunch of stuff. They heavily support the Vita and PlayStation. Um, they have a good relationship with them, but recently, in the last six months, they're put. They've started putting stuff out on the Switch. So this is their first time ever having an E3 press conference, and they notice none of these are new titles, but they had some pretty big things that they got the rights to. The big, the biggest one uh, would be Golf Story, which is the <laughs> best-selling game on Switch. It is the number one game in the Switch eShop. It's a golfing RPG. Yeah, it is. Oh, Golf Story! Yes. They're release. They're doing a physical release for Golf Story. It'll be coming out in September. I mean, I downloaded it myself. It was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it. Yep. Uh, they'll be doing a physical copy of the final version of Layers of Fear, if any of you guys have seen that. Uh, that was a really creepy, haunted house horror game. Okay, no one heard of it? Okay, that's fine. Nope, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, next, uh, they got the rights to uh, do Cosmic Star Heroin, which is the uh, next game from the Cthulhu Saves the World people. Um, I referenced it in our podcast on... or uh, Our free play podcast, but the section we did on RPG game me- mechanics and how they can uh, update them for the modern era. I use them as reference. It's a they're very good game. They got the rights to do Night Trap, the 25th Anniversary Edition for modern consoles. That, that's another one that is goes over my head. Oh, okay. Uh, guys, N- Night Trap is the reason we have an ESRB. 
Night Ow. Trap was this game, I believe on the Sega Saturn, that was an FMV game where you played this guy who had cameras set up all around this house and these space vampires were coming to kidnap the women living, the woman living in the house and you have to like home alone set up traps. But the whole I game remember is... that now. Yes! <laughs> the... And it, they, they played it in front of Congress. Like it was the reason that they made the ASRB because it was so controversial at the time. Even though the most controversial thing was the woman was about to take a shower, not naked, like in a robe, but fully, like you can't see anything but her legs. And then the vampires come in and take her. And that's it. Nothing. Nothing else. But that was shocking enough in the 90s that we needed to create a rating system for video games. Apparently I'm the only one who knows video game history. I, I'm going to see myself out. Um... <laughs> It's not that I don't know video game history. It's that, that that specific area that you're going into doesn't intrigue me in the slightest. It doesn't intrigue me either. I have no interest in it, but it's it's interesting that they're doing it. I never thought I would hear Night Trap is coming out ever again. Um, they got the physical rights to do ukulele. Uh, that'll be coming out in August for the Switch. And they got the physical rights for Dust and Elysian Tale, which is a pretty well-known uh, indie RPG. That one I have played. Okay, yes. All of those are for Switch. There are a bunch of titles that are coming out on PS4 and Vita as well that I did not write down because I have no interest in those right now. I do have a PS4, but that's not where I do my indie gaming. Um, but there's a bunch of other big ones that they did there as well. That's all I have to say on that. Thank you for letting me run down a list of things that I think are cool that nobody else has ever heard of. All right, well... <laughs> to each their own. So, unless anyone else has anything to say on the PC gaming show, uh, we're going to go into Sony. We're going to Sony, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to go to Sony, then. Is everybody there? Is every Are we sleeping now? Are we... Uh, so, to start with Sony, uh, what the hell did we start with? Uh, Ellie is still a lesbian, that's what we started with. <laughs> well, I, 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 I kind of meant the tent with the weird banjo playing that... That's, that was Last of Us. <laughs> yeah, so, so, to preface this, Sony went into E3 stating quite loudly and publicly and multiple times... We're not going to have a lot of games to show that we're going to focus on, or to yeah, show. They, they chose four major games that they, they focused on. Yeah, and then they were, and then they interspersed in a, a few others between then. But they were the, their main focus was on four games that are coming out this year or early next year, and the rest are going to be like showcasing for just for more so yeah. to say that they have additional stuff. They were literally telling people as they were going into the press conference to regulate their expectations. Yeah. Two weeks before E3 started, we're only showing four main... We're, we're only going to be highlighting four main games and we'll show a few others, but most of them will be shown even before our, our press conference. Honestly, there wasn't a lot of Sonys, but I'm actually relatively impressed with what they showed. I mean, Last of Us 2 was quite disturbing like the, the like all the, the the actual action parts of the game of the deaths that ellie commits on the, the guys that are hunting her really gruesome i mean she should <laughs> like, look, it may be it may be quite uncomfortable she shoots an explosive arrow at someone and they literally blow up they, it's like literally like like she crafts an explosive arrow and then shoots them they explode as though someone had stuffed a grenade down their throat and pulled the pin. Meanwhile, I go, I'm just glad from seeing the beginning of The Last of Us 2 that they definitely still know how to play with their watchers' emotions and that yeah. we're still going to have a, an emotional story-driven game. Yeah. Um, from what was shown, it definitely seemed like there's... <sighs> they have some things they want to tell and... They're pissing off their fan base with the. I was, I was like, 
The other not pissed off the fan base, but the three or four minute beginning scene leading into the kiss was just interesting and kind of people makes them wonder what the hell is going on. Yeah. From how I, I, I mean, it, it, this would probably be me having to go play the other games, uh, the other game before, you know, making too many assumptions on this, but yeah. I, I, okay, someone can, can correct me on this. I don't think it was ever stated in the first game that she was a lesbian. There, yeah, I think that was the DLC. Uh, that was the DLC. It, it, okay. it, became, it was very apparent in the DLC. I believe the DLC showed her with her first girlfriend. Okay, I'm mistaken, and I apologize. It was not in the core game. You are absolutely right. It was not in the, the core game. It, was, it, was, it wasn't until the DLC. But that also begs the question, why does that need to be something that is stated? If she had a boyfriend, we wouldn't say anything. Because people are heathen assholes? Oh, yeah, no, you're absolutely right, but I'm just saying in general. Well, do you mean mean in The Last of Us 2, or do you mean in the DLC? I just mean in general. Um, I mean, the, the DLC, they didn't make a big deal out of it. It was just she was dating someone who was a girl. In The Last of Us 2, I'm pretty sure the reason it was front and center was because so many people were pissed off about the DLC that Sony was basically giving them the middle finger and going, look, she still likes girls, fuck you. I see. Okay. (laughs) There was a lot of kickback, and they were having absolutely none of it. Like, they were... They, well, it's they not were... Sony, per se. It's Naughty Dog, right? Yeah, I know. Naughty Dog, I know. But Sony could have told them not to. And oh, yeah. Not... I, I think I think Sony doesn't care in the sense that, like, the, this this sold so well for them, and they, they care about the storytelling aspect of it, that they're fine with them yeah. just basically... The, the, the DLC, the DLC came across very natural, Shauna, and then this was basically them just giving the middle finger and going, if you don't, if you're not going to like The Last of Us because Ellie is a lesbian, then don't play our fucking games. We don't need your money. I yeah. get you. Okay. Well, one interesting thing that I kind of took away from the trailer, and um, this might be me digging a little deep here, but this was just an observation. I felt like the actual action parts of this trailer were strikingly similar to the gameplay that we saw for the Tomb Raider trailer. Um, They both featured women in the woods or in the jungle sort of stealthily sneaking around and trying to not get uh, caught by hunters. Did anyone else notice that? Yeah, that actually... That's actually a pretty good comparison. There's a difference, though, in the sense of... um... In the first one, it was a guy, and Ellie was the um, companion support character. Support character. Well, that, that I do know, yeah. But I yeah, just, she was she wasn't the main character until the DLC. Until the DLC, yeah, and that that I knew, but I just found that to be very interesting. And um, from that, I kind of took away that it's a very interesting thing that we're seeing more in these games: women being portrayed as survivors, as opposed to just you know running gun or whatever. It's just an interesting concept, I think, because, I mean, I guess just us being in the times of topics like Time's Up being a big movement at the moment, Mm -hmm. it's sort of an interesting reflection to see this sort of slowly coming over into the games. I feel like this year we saw a lot more female protagonists that were really, like, prominent Mm -hmm. in the games that were announced, and I I just found it very interesting that those two have that sort of portrayal of, it's not just women pulling out guns and running around, they they were not portrayed as Terry Crews. I, I think we're I think we're a couple of years into that now, but I absolutely agree. And I think I think The Last of Us 2, I, I want to give them credit and go like that this was intentional, but I can't help but have the little the little piece of doubt in my brain just speaking in the back going, well, they saw the tomb they saw that Tomb Raider is well received, so they're just bandwagoning. And I don't want to think that of Last of Us because the, the they and they did so well with the first game, but it's hard for me to go. They look they look so similar. And the I, thing is, I think that I don't think that was intentional. If I I mean just personal thought. I, I don't. It was think just it very. I, I think I just thought it was very interesting that they were so similar. Yeah, I, I don't think it. I don't think so either. But it's just 
I, I, I have that little bit of doubt, that little, that little doubt ghost in my brain that just goes, you know, everything is bad and you should be critical of everything. I think we all have that monster. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the monster in Sea of Solitude. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so so I, like, I enjoyed the Last of Us two trailer. I, I I I personally never played the first one, but I'm I'm excited that it's coming out. That there's a second one coming out. Um, I would like to see how they carry over the story because Last of Us one had this sub theme of like post apocalyptic um, people trying to survive after. An alien, no, sorry, not an alien, a fungus mutated into being able to infect humans, yep. and then that caused this civilization to collapse. And seeing how the, the I want to be able to see because all we saw in the trailer was her fighting humans. I there's no indication of her of, of the fungus zombies, so I want to see that being as well. It sort of reminded me of The Walking Dead a bit. Um, Whereas in the beginning, the things that they were trying to portray as the fearful things in the series were the zombies. And yeah. as the series progressed and as The Walking Dead progressed, they really started to ramp up the remaining survivors and humans as your enemies. It yes. kind of seems like this is going in the same direction because you're right. All you saw was these other hunters and these other people who were out there and there was no trace of anybody, of anything uh, infected I, that she was fighting. I'm actually super excited about that because... The, and anybody who's a fan of zombie movies knows that the the scariest thing in a zombie movie is never the zombies; never. it's the other humans. It, it, at this point, at this point in time, zombies are no are not a threat; they're a force of nature. And the things that you need to worry about are the are the humans or the, or the survivors or the the things that are not nature basically like, make sure make sure before you leave the house you put your zombie repellent on and watch out for Dave he's got a shotgun and he's going to shoot anybody who comes near him basically <laughs> basically yes um second was ghost, ghost of Tsushima this looks very interesting i am uh, the the thing that immediately struck me was as far as i can tell the game has no vis visual HUD at all. It is just game. From what was said after the trailer, they had there were the people who, who made it. I, I forget. It's uh, Insomniac, I think, right? Uh, I I don't think they ever showed it. Uh, uh, I never saw it. Yeah. So. so the people who make who are making Ghost of Tsushima, I, I someone correct me on this. They Sucker were, Punch I, Productions. It was Sucker Punch. You Thank you. So they said that they're aiming for a no HUD or a minimalist HUD. From what they have said so far, the, the only thing that's, that's going to be shown is not even a health bar thing. It's just going to be the the, 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 the weakening of an individual stance leading into that those gruesome kills that we saw. That game looks beautiful. Yes. I am so excited to play a samurai during the Mongol invasions. <laughs> yes. Um, they've said that they wanted it also to be a bit more open world. The main story they've said is not is, is going to be dealing with the Mongol invasion. But what was shown was a side quest. Huh. Interesting. Well, that gives you more to look forward to, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that game was beautiful. The use of color in it, it just... I can't they, wait to see it. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm I'm not sure if there was a better looking game in the press con in any of the press conferences. I agree uh, with that. I, all right, I could argue Spider Man there, but it, they, think, okay, Spider Man looked great, but in a very different way. I meant more from like you, I think you meant more from like an aesthetics and sort yeah. of artistic. I didn't mean, yeah, I didn't position, mean play not style. graphics. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I. Uh, what little we saw of the game, it just looks fantastic. I want them to keep me updated. Uh, Brian, I'm sure you're happy. Resident Evil 2 remake. Brian. You know, I saw that. Um, I, I I had gone to bed, and the next morning, both Ben and Wyatt messaged me 
so did you see the Resident Evil 2 uh, stuff? And I'm like, it was like 11 o'clock at night, and I already been <laughs> asleep for an hour. And I'm just like, what? I'm guessing Brian's opinion is it's vaporware, and he'll believe it when he sees it. The first, the first thought I had was, oh, good, good. Capcom announced this three years ago, and they didn't have a, they didn't utter a fucking peep. Now, uh, now here's this trailer, which looked very, very good, and. And, and I absolutely enjoyed it, and I can't wait for it. I'm I saw that it's got a, a release date of the you know end of January, and I'm like, okay, it's been three years. Um, I am cautiously excited. I it I'm... seems like Capcom is l- starting to deliver more on its older stuff, you know, with Mega Man, with Devil May Cry, now with Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2 remake. It seems to me like Capcom's starting to be like, yeah, we have totally fucked up over the last few years, so here's everything. Fans, well, take us back, please. Well, yeah, I mean, well, here's the thing. Like, Capcom announced that they were doing a Resident Evil 2 remake in 2015 and then never said anything again. So for three years, I was just like, okay, this is going to be another one of those games that gets announced and then we don't see it again for another like three console generations. So the, the, the fact that this, this showed up, not only was, was I very surprised, but, and it's coming out, you know, in seven months or so, allegedly. And so I, I cautiously excited. I say Capcom is the neglectful boyfriend that you broke up with, and now he's outside the house with a boombox telling you it's all going to be different now. Yeah, I, I'm I'm waiting to be burned, but right now it looks very good. And if it, if Capcom does hold to their current announced release date for this game, uh, it will be a day one purchase. I will buy it day one, and you will not see me again for a few days. I I, I mean it it. Looks like it's in the Resident Evil 7 engine. Um, it doesn't play the same way, but like graphically, it looks like it's yeah. the same engine in 7, and that's excellent. And if the RE2 remake does well, I would love if they took the 0 and 1 remakes and just threw them in the engine. Like, don't change anything, just throw them in the engine and give them the graphical upgrade and get it all on one system. I can buy them all. That, you know, that's true, and you know, because. Uh, my biggest gripe was that Capcom kept showing the HD remake love for Resident Evil 1. And I'm just like, okay, you know, what about... Y- you've you've given HD shiny for everything except for 2, 3, and Code Veronica. Well, Wh- let's, y- be, let's be honest here. 1 needed a lot more than 2 did. 2 holds up a lot better than 1. Absolutely, I totally agree with you there. I mean, 2 was my entry to the series. But the fact that 2, 3, and Code Veronica were ignored for so long, say, okay, come on, Capcom. We know I, you- I would love if they do Red Nemesis. I would love if the big secret was that the Resident Evil 2 nem- uh, remake includes Nemesis. That would be amazing. That would be okay. You, you, Capcom, you're restoring a bit of goodwill. Good, good. But I would love to see Nemesis get the full-on remake and and it, HD clarity and all that fun stuff. It would be beautiful. I Because if, if we can get two, which they've already done, which they're already doing, three, and Code Veronica... We already have four or five. We all have, have the rest of them on modern consoles. So we'll finally have everything playable again. Yeah, yeah we absolutely yeah. would. We absolutely uh, would. And I've, I've I've got it all on Steam except for, you know, hopefully, you know, with two, three and Code Veronica. So it's... And when they and when they upgrade the graphics on Zero and One, Brian, I don't want to hear you say a peep about them re- doing a graphical remake. I mean, I want to hear it. I mean, I might, but uh, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. I just felt, I just feel like Capcom has been giving Resident Evil One so much more love than the rest of the series. It's like, okay, come on, can 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 you move on to a different project, please? So next up was the Kojima mindfuck that was just 
Death Stranding. And, and then, yeah. what was that shit? Okay. Uh, what was oh that? Okay. Here, I, I, can, I can throw it off for you very quickly. It's post apocalyptic FedEx Simulator. Yeah, and my my only note for Death Stranding is still weird as fuck. Yeah, that basically that was my my I, I, when I saw this, that was basically my reaction to. It. I'm like, okay, it's still what the it's still just as what the fuck as it was when it was initially announced. I have I, I've never known more about what isn't happening in a trailer, and then you know, oh, it's Kojima. Of course not. I I have never seen a video game that you can so obviously see the amount of cash that they threw at it before. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yeah. There's a lot of money in invested in this game. Almost all all of it almost all of it gone to uh, Norman Rebus. <laughs> no, I just a grab? <laughs> Sorry. This is a, this is this just feels to me like they're trying to just sell it based on the name alone of it's Kojima. Yeah. That's really what it feels like to me, and it that's not how you sell a game. Kojima might get away with this, but that's not how you do it. Well, I mean, I mean, they they it's it's happened before, you know. Daikatana was successful, right? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Somebody uh, got it. Thank you, Shauna. In terms of what it was actually shown, it looks nice. They don't explain a lick of anything. Nope. And just leave everyone else to go guessing. Like, here's the here's more, more gameplay or supposed gameplay. We have no idea if it actually is. And yeah, then I'm left with like, okay, here's a bit more information too. You're apparently a FedEx delivery man. I feel like delivering you... what bodies? I feel apparently... like delivering. Sorry, delivering wrong. fetuses. <laughs> I feel like we'll get more of what's actually going on next E3, because I don't see this coming out for at least another year. Oh, that's not coming out for another year in the least. It's probably in not at least. Probably not coming out for another 20 years, at least. It, that this, uh... They need to put it out before Norman Reedus dies, so... yeah. Like, Kojima's been wanting to make a game with Guillermo del Toro so badly that... Yeah. So... But yes... <laughs> Go on. Oh, sorry. Go on. We um, anything else on Death Stranding or not really? No, um, I'm good. I have two things. Uh, one, okay. thing, the one little bit that I got from the trailer is um, it kind of seems like Norman Reedus got a little typecast in this. I just from every from the little bits I was seeing, he just seemed like okay, this is Daryl Dixon in a space apocalypse or something. <laughs> it seemed very You're not like wrong. His, I it say, it seemed very much like his Walking Dead character. I was gonna say typecast. I think they just cast Norman Reedus as Norman Reedus. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was literally one part where I forget what it was, but he said something like, "Oh, they're all outside. I can't let them know I'm here." And I said, "If I closed my eyes, I would think I'm watching The Walking Dead." Like, it's literally the same premise almost. It's or at least from the little bit we know. Um, also, can I also say that I think that this is the first trailer I've ever seen that opens with a baby's ass. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> see, see, you thought you thought seeing to have a baby and some size one was esophagus was bad. You, you didn't say the thing about seeing what the baby's behind was. I said, "What is this?" <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> and, uh, and and the and the uh, enemies that are giant ghosts with umbilical cords going into the sky. Yeah, there's there's some real fucked up shit going on in that game. <laughs> I do not want the drugs they are on. <laughs> I was going to say, the only way this could be more disturbing is if H.R. Geiger was working on it. <laughs> well, I shouldn't uh, give them any ideas. Yeah. It's not too late. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything more on Sony? Uh, Spider-Man! Neo 2? I need, I need both photos of Spider-Man! We're, we're, go we're going in order. Neo 2, right? It's yeah, Neo 2, technically. That's all I have to say. It's a thing. Yeah. It, it, I'm sure a lot of people like the first one. I'm sure the second one will be more of the same. It's basically for people who like Dark Souls type games. A anybody got anything else? I'm trying to cock block uh, Nick. Anybody Anybody got anything else? <laughs> any? No, I got nothing. <laughs> yes. I, I have nothing except photos of Spider-Man. Uh, yes. No Spider-Man. Spider um, 
as someone who just really enjoys the old Spider-Man games of just swinging around New York City, just seeing the gameplay trailer for this year was just awesome. Electro, Rhino, Scorpion, Vulture, pretty, pretty much the formation of the Sinister Six. And yeah. That is amazing. And, I, and maybe it's just me, but I, the, the tease at the end is obviously Goblin. It, it can't not be. Um, I think some people were saying it was um, that because the originator of the Sinister Six is Doc Ock, yeah. that everyone was saying, "Oh, it's got to be him." But didn't so. Doc Ock show during the dur- during the fight on top of the raft? Was I mistaken? I don't think so. No. I don't remember seeing Doc Ock. Shock- I-, I assumed it was Doc Ock. Though. Shock, yeah, yeah, Shocker, Scorpion, Rhino, um, Doctor yeah. Neg- Mister Negative. Yeah, Mr. Negative. Although Mr. Negative, I don't think was ever part of a Sinister Six. He was not. But it, the combat looks sweet. Kind of reminds me a bit of the Batman games, so that's cool. It's it's basically an Arkham game with Spider-Man, and that's not a bad thing. That's yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, Ar- it, the Arkham games are super cinematic, and that that type of game works for just about any superhero. Yes, it does. And I'm the only thing that's making me upset is that it's September seventh release date, and Dragon Quest Eleven is September fourth. I'm going, fuck! I have to pick. <laughs> what? No, you don't have to pick. You just have to not work and play Dragon Quest for twenty hours every day. I already, have, to, I already have vacation. Day. I already have vacation set aside. I run, it, funny enough, I had it set aside even before these two release dates were announced. I was like, oh, what for is timing? I was gonna go and travel, but fuck that shit. I was gonna say you can you can seriously get eighty hours in before Spider Man comes out if you just don't eat or sleep. Yeah, but I like eating and I like sleeping. Well, then I'm then I'm sorry, Nick. You're just gonna have to die. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just that's the end then of it. You're, then your only your only recourse is you have a couple months now to create a time machine to give yourself extra days. You better get working. I'm pretty sure I can get pretty far in Dragon Quest XI before Spider-Man comes out. And I'm sure Spider-Man will be probably about a 15-20 hour game. So I can probably punch through that in two days. So that's honestly really all Sony had. Yeah. It was a solid conference. I don't think it was as good as Microsoft's because I kind of like quantity over quality. But considering what Sony did last year and most of their games were out, it was like, you know, I'm okay with the deep dives of the various games. Yeah, I I definitely... Sony for me... Sony is number three for me. So mm, I'd Mi- give it number two. Well, for me, Microsoft is number two and Nintendo is number one, so... I, I would say Nintendo was arguably the worst of the three, but that's kind of picking things apart. I think all three were all very solid. Mm-hmm. Very good. And so, can, can we go to Nintendo now? Hey, do you want to take yes. a break? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I, I I would like to get this stu- you know, at least get my thoughts in before I leave. Yeah, please. I'm just playing, Nick. <laughs> you know, alright, so Nintendo was, was the, the one that I was looking forward to the most and, you know, I was watching the Twitters while the, uh, the Nintendo Direct was going on and then watched it later after I I came home, so... <laughs> I, I will say my notes for the Nintendo Direct are not in any order whatsoever, so I apologize. So, you know, they, they showed off some DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I actually have to get off my ass and play the damn game, because I love... I loved the first Xenoblade Chronicles. I didn't actually play it. Um, I was very intrigued with Super Mario Party... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you see how they More were? friendship ruining. Yeah, yeah that's a, my, <laughs> my note for Mario Party is let's ruin some friendships. I, I just love the fact that Mario Party is the Nintendo franchise that nobody admits that they actually love. It's Monopoly. <laughs> it's Monopoly, but with Mario. I do like the fact you can use multiple switches to make unique mini games. That did seem kind of neat. Yes. So cool. Being able to just move yeah. them around and actually changes the game. That's mind also you that, mind you, that's local. It's not. That's not. That's not. That is a local switch thing. Only it's not an online thing. Right. Yes. Yeah. 
There's no way it could be. Also, screw you, Nintendo, for throwing Mew with every Pokeball Plus controller for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Because Why? That's amazing. Because you basically are like, all right, how much money for the Pokeball controller? Here's my I was money. getting anyways from my... My wife, when she saw the Pokeball controller, went, I need that. And I'm like, okay. And they said, get a Mew. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get a motherfucking Mew. So let's be honest. This is this is not necessarily a game that's designed for diehard fans of Pokemon. This is no. a game meant to be for the Pokemon Go people to get them into Pokemon as a game before the actual Pokemon game for the Switch comes out next year. Yes. Shut your mouth. I'm going to play this and I'm going to love it. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, let's that. be honest. I mean, also, let's be honest. If you're an actual Pokemon game, you played this Pokemon game when you were five years old in 1995 when Pokemon Yellow came out. Eight. Whatever. 1998 was red and blue. And I think, what, a year later was Pokemon Yellow? I think that was... What, yeah. I think I'm right. In, in, in any event... <laughs> You played this. You, you played this game twenty years ago. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I played it way more recently than that, but that's that's fine. I, oh, I return. I returned Pokemon Red and Blue. Speaking of friendship ruining, Overcooked Two is going to be coming to the Switch. That looked so good. Why it inflict? So why it inflicted Overcooked One on me recently? Uh, Did you kill him afterwards? Almost. <laughs> Did you give him a third degree burns? Oh, you know, it's... And because, Nick, because it's Wyatt, he didn't tell us anything about the game. He just put a controller in my hand and said, let's play. That sounds about what Wyatt, yes. So, <laughs> That's very Wyatt. I, I was not prepared <laughs> for the crippling anxiety that I, happens I, when I you... You didn't just shove a controller through him. I, I nearly did after the first round. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck is this? Yeah, Overcooked looks like it could be a fun game, but it will test it will test your relationships with other people. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, it will, because it, it's co-op zaniness. So, did anybody else see Not Mech Warrior for the Nintendo? Oh, Damon the, uh, X Machina. Damon X Machina, eh. Okay, I, I'm I, sure that I'm sure that might be interesting, but giant mech warrior games have never been my thing. Okay, I was like, that looks really cool. We haven't had a mech warrior on a Nintendo in ever. I think they might have had a sim a game like that on Super Nintendo, but I don't think it was actually a mech warrior. But like, I'm I'm pretty excited for that. Like, that looked pretty cool. Was there an Armored Core game? Um, GameCube? That, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. But it's been a long time, in any case. Yeah. Uh, Killer Queen Black looked interesting, kind of looked like Joust. I was gonna say, it's it's basically Joust with bees. It that, was... It's really I fun. love Joust. Yeah. I love it's, Joust, so... Well, Kill, Killer Queen was is an arcade game that has never been brought... To consoles before because the control scheme is so unique to arcades, but somehow they've made it work on the Switch. Hmm. So, I'm interested in seeing how, but uh, it was it it was one it's one of those arcade games that you can't really port over because it just doesn't work on consoles. So, I'm interested in seeing how they made it work. We'll see. Oh, Fire Emblem, Fire yeah. Emblem Three Houses. I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad it's announced. Fire Emblem fans can kind of finally simmer down now. They don't need to, you know, ceaselessly talk about it. <laughs> yeah. And then we got a, uh, we got Fortnite out today or the day. Uh, of the day. <sighs> Sorry, hey, a lot of people love that. I mean, to be I, fair. Having Fortnite on a Switch is kind of a big thing. Yeah, and it and it's it has crossplay with Xbox and PC, not PlayStation because Sony still has their heads up their asses. Um, it was stated too that within a couple days of it being announced, I'm being on the Switch, it had been downloaded over two million times. So mm -hmm. that's that. That means there's at least two million Switch users. <laughs> 
the right now the Switch. I, I'd have to look it up. I looked it up a little while ago on how many the Switch has sold. But the Switch, if it can, if it continues the the trend that it's doing, it's going to outsell the Wii. How scary is that? It just might. Mm-hmm. It just might. Now, I know they also showed... I know there's, there was a game that's already out. It's been on PC for a while. Hollow Knight. Hollow which, Knight, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like the Metroidvania to me. Yep. Uh, Ark Survival Evolved. Mega Man 11. World Ends With You. Okay, no, no, no. We're not, we're not skipping over that. I'm that's so that's excited that's for The World Ends With You. Oh my god. <laughs> I've been waiting for this... For years, the world end of you was one of my three favorite games of all time. Oh my God! There's gonna be a new end. There's gonna be a new campaign at the end of the game. We're finally gonna be able to find out who that girl was that we saw at the end of the iPhone one. Oh my God! I'm so excited, and they're gonna be in Kingdom Hearts. I am so excited. This is beautiful. The end. And wow, that was amazing. Okay. <laughs> and and, and, and noted. <laughs> and Ronnie's got wood. All right. It's uh, it's, only for you, Ronnie. Only for you. Thank you. Thank you. I I feel bad for Deja. Uh, <laughs> uh oh, I don't want to talk about Smash. Oh, but we're going to. <laughs> That, leave that for the end. That'll be the last that, one. That, that'll be. I know. I. I it's just. I, I. I know, but I really have to get moving here soon. So I just want to say my piece on Smash, and then probably start taking off here. Okay. Um. I. I. I am definitely not your eight. Your typical Smash user, and I really, you know, gameplay is the most important thing to me, and. You really need to have, especially for a fighting type game, you need to have game balance. So in order to have game balance, you need to have fewer characters. Not 68! <laughs> There's, yeah, I, I just, like, I, I remember the, them going through, like, here's, the here's our character roster for, for Smash Ultimate. And I'm just like, one, no, that's, they're starting to name them off, I'm like... They get like five into it, and I'm like, they're gonna have every single fucking character, aren't they? Sure they enough, are. They are yeah. having. As six... soon as Snake showed up, I was like, oh dear fucking Nick? Christ, it's gonna be everyone, isn't it? it? Yeah, it, it's everyone. It, it worked for Marvel vs. Capcom too. No, it didn't. Iceman was the single most broken character in the game. It's still played to this day in tournaments. So, yes, I will Iceman's say... banned. <laughs> I will say this. Most games nowadays with a large roster for fighting games eventually reach some semblance of balance. It takes a while and it takes a lot of investment and in play by the community to, you know, balance it out so therefore the developers can, you know, fix the problems. You're asking Nintendo to do this. That's why <laughs> that was the point I was this. that's the point I was trying to make. That's that's for developers that actually care about their game. I don't think Nintendo cares about the Switch the, or the or the or the balance of Smash. The the funny part to me is you're saying this about all these characters, but here's the funny part. We know every old character is there and we know the two new characters and the new Echo Fighter, but we did not see the character select screen. We don't know that this is all that's in the game. Oh, no, there's, there's plenty be a of few time more. for new characters to come. There's going to be a few more, definitely, and I understand that. It wouldn't shock me if the roster top seventy. And and this is this was this was every fear I had of just this big expansive roster. Um, I do like that they're throwing in all the stages. It, that's what's looking like so far. There's over like there's over seventy at this point. So holy fucking shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't mind some of the extra sis trophies. I don't mind the uh, directional air dodge, but it, it just it, it seemed like to me that they're that Nintendo is completely pandering 
to the competitive scene, to the competitive audience, which means you're just going to get more tryhards playing this game and rage quitting on you mid-match. And it's just, I think the online is just not going to be worth it. I already have pretty much stopped playing with all my friends locally because I don't want to spend 200 hours practicing to get nowhere. I I actually like yes I think like like them doing the 0.1 percentage points so you can actually see on the damage exactly how much something does like those are definitely changes to competitive market but the including every smash character ever is definitely them giving a stick to the casual crowd not the competitive crowd I disagree with that because there were a lot of competitive players that were crying and moaning for for Snake to come back, for the Ice Climbers to come back. They really wanted some of these other, you know, turn, you know, competitive viable characters to make a comeback, and they did. Well, okay, I I, I understand that, but to a serious fighting game character person, like they're looking at what the moves do rather than the characters and exactly what roles each character plays, and having 18 characters that play the same role doesn't really matter to them they just choose whichever one's the best it's the casual crowd that goes i want my favorite character i haven't seen them since three games ago why can't i play them and see i rather it's i rather see a smaller roster with better balance and and just you know see things more streamlined than just throw a massive pool of characters at me and say, yeah. here you fucking go. And that's why I said it's more of a casual thing. The casual people do not care about game balance. They're never going to see the balanced game. They just, they want to be able to have fun playing the character they want to play. And like I said, that the big roster is a big olive branch to those players. And, and that's fine, but then I hope Nintendo starts making more options that doesn't that seems like they're expanding more to the casual crowd and giving a big middle finger to the competitive crowd. You, you can't cater to both. They tried that with Smash 4 and it blew up in their faces. They can't do it again. Sure they can. They can fail at it, but they can certainly try. And this is why I probably am not going to go get Smash Ultimate. Next because time. it's it's going to be... You, you chase two rabbits and you're going to lose both. It's, 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 that, it's that rule of this is why you see you know, different audiences for each different kind of game. It's why you see you know, Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear and Street Fighter and Tekken perform so well is because they they look at the casual crowd and say nah, whatever i i got two comments to that one is have you ever known nintendo to learn from their mistakes fair and two yeah, yeah. nintendo does prioritize just them smash will always be a casual first game most of what they're doing is all of branches to the competitive crowd but if it ever comes down to them making a choice on whether this should benefit the casual game or whether it's going to do the competitive, they're always going to choose casual. They, Sakurai said that. But and if it doesn't hurt either, or if it's options, they don't have a problem putting that in. I, then that I really hope that they make, you know, that in the months to come, they show more changes, you know, c uh, coming to, you know, either put the kibosh on competitive scenes or or just i i, I don't know it's well, it was it was every every worst nightmare i could have had about smash come true for me well then one question then why does it irk you so much if nintendo wants to make overtures to the competitive crowd i just I just feel like if you're going to play to a competitive crowd, go whole hawk. Don't don't half ass, you know, part casual, part competitive. I would say if you're going to do it, go whole hawk. But I don't think you can really do that with the Smash franchise. And the reason why is because with fighting games such as Street Fighter or 
Mortal Kombat, any of those titles, the characters in them are self-contained. Whereas you're dealing with an entire... You're not even just dealing with an entire empire with Nintendo. You're dealing with everybody's favorite characters and everybody has a favorite character. So because of that, the breadth of that, and because of the fact that a lot of those faces from those games are from games that are casual, that have more casual fans like your Mario's and, you know, your even maybe even your Pokemon's to a certain extent. Animal Crossing. It's really hard for them to go full hardcore and push that and say, we're really going to gear this towards the competitive market because it doesn't have that kind of breadth and roster with the characters themselves. And I absolutely, completely, 100% agree with this. So then, if that's the and if that's the case then I would like to see them completely neglect the competitive crowd. The problem is, is that they're never going to learn and they're going to try and make this competitive regardless. And it's, it's that, it's that, it's that whole, we're trying to make this competitive by adding in some different mechanics and such that competitive gamers like to see and opening up a Smash Invitational and some other Nintendo sponsored tournaments. It's it, it's it's going you're trying to cater to something that may that isn't a hundred percent there when you're you know when it's really is based in more of a casual gameplay. Nick, Nick I mean they let's let's take exactly what you're saying. The earlier Smash games did not cater to a competitive crowd at all, but there were still competitive tournaments. This is the to the extent this is like the to me, this is like them taking a first person shooter and putting a spectator mode in. So if people want to do it as an eSport, it's easy for them to get footage. Like none of these competitive changes will touch the casual crowd even a little bit. Not a single one hurts the casual crowd, which is their primary crowd. All it does is make it easier for people that want to play it competitively. And if they want to play it competitively, they will make it work. They'll do what they did in the past and do tier lists for characters or ban the character if there's a balance issue. But, like, they're going to do it no matter what. Like, there's the game is going to be competitive for certain people no matter what. I don't see how making changes that helps them hurts the casual audience if they won't even notice any of it. And the, the answer to that question will be the online play. And I, I, they did the For Fun, they did the um, For Honor or I, or For Glory, rather. I, I think that was what it was called. Yeah. And For Fun or For Glory, yeah. For Fun, For Glory. And both of them well, not not for glory, but for fun, completely fell on its face because Nintendo was not prepared for the online scene of that, of trying to get multiple people. Even for glory had its connection issues. Now, granted, that can be, you know, you know, person to person, but for something that relies mostly on an online connection and you would almost have to for the switch because if you want to use a gamecube controller you're uh, unless you, unless nintendo creates something that supports multiple usb ports you're either going to have an online uh wired connection and no gamecube controller or a gamecube controller and wireless connection there's no in between so i i just feel like this is you know for people who want to jump into the online scenes, this is going to be extremely difficult to do because it, it because for fun is just going to be this, you know, this laggy mess. And then for glory, you're going to run into all the all the, you know, competitives and competitive tryhards. And unless you're going to do couch co uh, couch multiplayer. I, I don't really see how this is going to be successful if you're gonna you know try and cater to two different crowds. Couch multiplayer is the only kind I do, so I, other than theoretically, I can't argue with you about the multiplayer stuff because I don't play online multiplayer. Period. So, 
I, I tried it for just a little bit in the Wii U version, and even with a wired connection, it was impossible to play for fun. The only way is for glory is to play in for glory, and that was that was a train wreck and a half because you just run into people who are just trying so hard to make it into the competitive scenes. My, my opinion is that online multiplayer is always going to be shit in fighting games. You will never get away from that, so don't even try. Give it the op- put the option there because some people like to troll other people or like to go out and show their epeen but like there's you're never going to fix that and i don't think there's any chance of you being able to i think if you put i think if you put i mean you've seen uh, you know you could see it with games like killer instinct and with and with some of the neck you know other games that support net code i believe soul caliber 6 will um you can see that the online, again, it's not perfect, but it is significantly better. If Nintendo really wanted to walk in that direction, I think they would explore that as an option. They uh, could design net coding, just as an example, Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue. They have net coding where, even for the U.S., which is a fairly large continent, they can do cross country gameplay online with. Some frame loss, but it's it's like it's not to the point where the game is unplayable. Right. It, it it just makes it so it's not ideal for a competitive environment. It's good for casuals. It's good for the. And it's still good for practice. I've seen I've seen that you know a, enough of that with competitive players that it's it, it is at least a viable option. Yeah. If you know it is not ideal, it is still the the best way is. No person, you know, in person, and no one will dispute that. But for what it's worth, with our current online capacities, it's serviceable. Yeah. If they threw out all of the stuff that that they put in just for the competitive crowd, multiplayer would still suck, wouldn't it? Like, not a single one of those changes will make people play any any less be any less shitty towards other people right because that because of just the community itself rather than the 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 problem isn't that like they could take all of the competitive stuff out of it but people were already playing the competitive scene started with the smash on n64 and only got bigger from there it's never gone away it only grows no matter what they whether they put in stuff to support them or not, they're there. Like, I, 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 I guess, I guess my, I guess the, the part that has been the problem for me is, is that is that fact of everyone tries to make everything competitive, and that uh, honestly is one of is a pet peeve of mine and i would like to see gaming companies i know game freak has been one that looks the competitive community right in the eye gives them a nice big middle finger and then does everything precisely the opposite to piss them off and i i guess i just wanted to see nintendo continue on that trend of just giving that middle finger because not everything has to be this hyper competitive scene and that's yeah, and but if you are gonna cater to that community, make them more of an effort than you already are. Meanwhile, I've already pre-ordered the game. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I, once, once Nick leaves, I'm probably going to talk about how awesome Smash is. So, uh, <laughs> I, um, I'm I'm yeah. going to continue to look at the you know the single player options, the single player modes. I'm not completely shutting myself out they they didn't do a very good start with me but as more details were released after the press conference you know it looks like items could be good uh assist trophies and pokeball summons could be good so i mean it's it's something that i'm gonna continue notes on you know take keeping track of because i love because i liked 
the old smashes. I loved Brawl and I loved Melee. So I'm hoping like this can rekindle my 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 love for it. But this was just it was not a good first step for me personally. And I know I am in the very, 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 very small minority of this. So <laughs> you laugh, but it's true. You know, I, I'm I am not the kind of person that Nintendo makes this game for. I and I, I understand that. I feel like most of your complaints, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, are about the fan base and not the game. I think that is a pretty good assessment of... Really, it, it boils down to this... I kind of feel like... I feel the same way with Pokemon too. that the community has gotten so toxic that I just feel like a, that it either needs to embrace that toxic, toxicity or make active changes to shove it away. And mm-hmm. and that is something Nintendo can control, and they choose not to. I don't think that competitive... I don't think that competitive inherently has to be toxic, and I don't think that... It's, it doesn't inherently have to be toxic, it's just how it ultimately ends up being because all it takes is a few bad eggs to spoil a whole bunch. Fair enough. I was going to say, I'll, I'll leave it with, I think you and I have very different ways of viewing video games. <laughs> and the I, fan bases. I, I, really, really, fit, yeah, fan bases, pending the fan base, can either be a really good thing or a really bad thing. Thing. You want examples of how things can be really bad? Look at any competitive Pokemon forum. <laughs> yes, but that still doesn't affect me having fun in my single-player Pokemon experience, and the comp- and the online multiplayer scene in Smash does not affect my couch co-op playing with friends. It's if it's a all I'm judging is whether the game looks good and is fun to play. And if other people want to ruin their experiences, that's fine. But for me, I'm never going to... I've never played Smash Online. I'm never going to play Smash Online. The only games I play online are MMOs, because they have to be, and Splatoon, which is basically an MMO to me. I I, I wouldn't call it an MMO, but I would definitely say it is multiplayer design so if you want to call that mmo then by all means but it, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a game where the online is the primary component that's what it, i was getting at yes I, I i understand what you i understand the point you're trying to get it's just we i don't think we really have a term for that yet yes <laughs> it's just one of those I, I know what you mean but i know that's not the right term and you know that yeah. too yeah <laughs> Online online multiplayer has never been Smash's focus. It's awesome that it's there for the people who want to use it, but the online multiplayer is not going to affect what I think of the game. And, and, and for me, because I don't really have many people to play couch multiplayer with due to scheduling, due to, you know, just falling out of touch with friends, due to, you know, some being total cancers... You know, no, online is now my main go-to if I want to do multiplayer, and that is a completely different beast in of itself. And and there are t- and it's those aspects that make me say, you know, it, it you know it's ruined. You know, the online community has ruined Mario Kart for me. I didn't think that was fucking possible. Because Mario Kart is so steeped in bullshit that you you kind of take that with a grain of salt. So, so for me personally, it's just, you know, on uh, you know the, you know online is how I have to play nowadays, 
and to just see what Smash is doing is just kind of going, all right, well, maybe this is something I don't have to pick up. Anyways, I've gone on about 15 minutes too long for me, so I need to hurry and get to work. So you guys have fun. <laughs> and we will. And, and thank you very much for being on the episode, Nick. Yes, you're welcome, Brian. I think that was like... 36 for me so you can figure out the math for that later i will so i am i am out of here have a good night guys thank you much have a nice night bye 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 nick sorry for arguing with you oh, oh. Huh? oh please i don't think he minds too much i don't think he minds either so stop being canadian <laughs> so since we started should we continue talking about smash <laughs> <laughs> or do we want to go back to other stuff and end with Smash? Uh, let's let's veer veer back a bit. Um, <laughs> you know, it's that was that was when Smash was was shown. That's when my Twitter feed exploded. Yeah, that was the very end of the conference, the last half of it. Yeah. Um, this was where I saw Octopath Traveler. It was during this. Uh, during this, that's when I, I saw the trailer for it, and I went, ooh. Um, also, I'm glad we're seeing another Mario sports game, Mario Tennis Aces. Yeah, especially after how bad the previous Mario Tennis did. It, this yeah. looked like they fixed it. Like, I saw all the advertising uh, with Rafa Nadal playing tennis against Mario. Jeez. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, it was also during the French Open, so... Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, so it's, it's like, hey, you're here! <laughs> As, uh, we, we saw Starlink with Star Fox characters. We did, yes. Um, Paladins Champions of the Realm. Yep. The game that got cancelled and is no longer in action. I believe the servers were shut down. Was it? Oh no. I believe so. Someone correct me on this, please. Well it came check me. Well it it came out. I know it came out, but I swore the servers are no longer active. I'm I I am going to double check myself because I could have sworn I heard that Paladin was I'm I'm Googling it right now. I was gonna say, I'm like I mean this was a game that was uh initially released on Steam. And well, it was came out two years ago on on Steam on PC, and then it came to the Switch. So while you're looking that up, we we mentioned Fortnite. Um, we mentioned let's see, where's this? They showed a Dragon Ball Fighter Z, or Dragon Ball Fighters, if you want to go '90s, <laughs> where everything needed. That sounds about right. Yeah. Everything ended. Everything ended in a Z. Because we were extreme back then, man. Yeah, extreme. <laughs> you have to say it like that because that's that's the '90s for you. Oh, if if you're accompanied with day glow colors, that works too. Yes. <laughs> it absolutely have to be. Um. I don't. Rec I don't. I don't think I. I remember much anything else besides you know all smash all the time. That was kind of where I took all of my notes, I'll be perfectly honest. I, I was very amused that Daisy beat Waluigi to a Smash game. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, I'm happy to see her here, but you're right. She made it in before Waluigi did. And it, and it spawned a lot of sad memes. I did see several of them. It, it spawned a lot of sad memes that Waluigi isn't in has again shut out of the Smash roster. I I I do like the concept of Echo Fighters, which we've been clone fighters as we've been calling them up until now. Yes. So I I I pre-ordered the game immediately uh, because I am very much looking forward to Smash. Just because, I mean, because I didn't play the last incarnation of Smash. I didn't own a Wii U, and I felt that Smash on the 3DS was just did, was not the same. I I bought it on 3DS and I was fine with it, but I'll I'll be getting this. Yeah, I mean, to me, the awesomeness of Smash is not a game. You can't contain it on a handheld. I mean, yes, the game's good. It plays fine. It just felt 
off. You want it more epic. Meanwhile, I prefer almost anything in a handheld. That's why I love the Switch so much. Oh, yes, and I'm glad that, you know, you know, I, I'm, like, I, my 3DS has seen so much neglect my of, of my late. switch lives in my my switch lives in my hands it it does it does not ever go back in its cradle even when it needs to charge i still i sleep with it i <laughs> uh the, i have a second charging cable hooked up next to my bed it does i literally do not put it even in oh wow it in you're not messing around <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly the only time it goes in stock is if deja wants to play a game because she hates playing on handhelds and only plays on consoles Hence why the Switch is perfect for us. It's very good. It works both yeah. ways. Yes, just like me. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> well well said. You snuck it in there. Bravo. <laughs> so, from what I saw for major changes for Smash character-wise, we got Mario with the cat with Cappy, which hopefully they'll add a new move or two in that, that references him. We got Breath of the Wild Link, completely new setup with abilities, with his ultimate being the Ancient Arrow. We got Zelda from Link Between Worlds, which I love because I feel like that game got a whole bunch of attention when it came out, and then everybody forgot about it. Uh, Fox got his Star Fox Zero look, and then we got Inklings and Ridley for new fighters. I was... I was... You know, Ridley's been one of those characters that people have been asking for for a long time. And Nintendo finally heard the call. And the way that they presented Ridley, oh my god. Where he just straight up murdered uh, yeah. Mario and, and, yeah. and Mega Man. And I was like, wow, talk about an entrance. <laughs> mm-hmm. And just the expression on Samus's face. Yeah, she's yeah. She, she, like she's like walking through, walking through. They get taken out. They get taken out. She's like walking, just stops, and just like you can hear the sigh, even though there's no sound. Mm -hmm. It's just like he's right behind me, isn't he? Oh. <laughs> Damn it! Oh. <laughs> and I'm super happy for Daisy. I'm super happy. Yep, da Daisy. Uh... David Hayter is doing the voiceover again for Snake. Of course. Which, you know, uh, yes, good. They, they finally answered the, and the, the question for uh, Schrodinger Smash. Is it a port or a new game? The answer is it's both. Uh, and again, I saw some complaints about the... It's like, oh, this feels more like a port. I'm, and I'm just like, again, for me, this is... I'm, for me, this is basically going from brawl to ultimate. Well, it's it it is it is it is. This is exactly what I thought, except they went farther than I expected. It is Smash Four, the same engine. They took the game and they went. We're gonna do a bunch of updates, and then they lost control of themselves. They had too much caffeine, and they just updated everything in the game everywhere. I think that's fair. They just got drunk one night and they woke up. And there was Smash Ultimate now. What did we do? I think we updated the game. What did we update? Everything. And I, I'm, I'm just... The, and also amusing the crap out of me is that Nintendo still... And I, I know why they do it, but... the the Once again, the revival of the GameCube controller... Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm just like... They will never give that up. They will never. I, I'm like... You're bringing back the GameCube controller for a single game again, Nintendo? Okay, to be fair, th th this is another one of those bones being thrown to the competitive crowd. Because literally every single one of those people that are competitive about Smash use the GameCube controller. Hey, if they can if they can make their money back for making them, why the hell not just put them out for every system? They, they yeah, make. why not? Which, which is fair. I mean, yes, the GameCube controller feels very nice uh, for Smash. I will be playing it on my Switch Pro, most likely. I mean, I do have... I, so lie. I still have four games. And they they announced that um, the if you bought the GameCube controller adapter for the Wii U, it'll work on this as well, So, which I have. So, 
I'm like, good, I won't have to buy... I already have four GameCube controllers. I'm not going to buy another one. <laughs> yeah. I say they, they, they announced the Smash Invitational, which uh, Nick touched on a little bit. So yes. So we'll, we'll have that in the Splatoon 2 World Championships for competitive Nintendo. And, you know, you know Nintendo gets, gets a cut of money from... The, the having Smash as a competitive game in the esports world, so why not? Go right ahead. Knock mm -hmm. yourself out. I mean, I will never play Smash Bro I will never play a Smash game competitively. So, it, for me, it's always been the, a fun, casual series. Mm -hmm. So, anytime I see a Smash Brothers tournament at on the pack schedule, I'm like, nope, fuck you, not going, nope. I did that once, got eliminated in the very first round in about half a second. Uh, just, no. You yeah, have fun and joy, but... You're not, you're not going to win the bronze medal for, like, the 12th year in a row? Uh, no, and that's, that? that's silver medal for, silver? For, for the original Mario Kart. Okay. Because, <laughs> you know... It's always been, Smash has always been fun and casual for me, and I have some friends who, when they want to play Smash with me, they insist on turning off, like, turning off all items and playing only on Final Destination, and I'm just like, no, fuck you, you're in my house. No, we're not. Here's the funny <laughs> part. I play, it, I play it casually. I still prefer it that way, though, because I don't feel like I'm bad enough at the game that items are just going to fuck me up more. Which, for me, is half the fun. <laughs> it's like, ah, ba bomb. <laughs> like, I'm always the worst person at Smash out of my group because I never play it alone. Like, I, I'll i play through the story mode once because I love because I love that. If there's one, Smash 4 didn't have one, which pissed me off. And then I'll play once every couple months when I have somebody over to play with. And I'm terrible because they play all the fucking time. Eh. So I have one character that I learn how to play, and then I try to remember that one character, which is typically Zero Suit Samus at this point. Mm. So, anyone have anything else to say on Nintendo before we start wrapping this up? Um, I have one more thing. Go ahead. Can we talk about the fact that they're adding fake Smash Balls? Yes, I saw that. That's going to be hard to see on a screen. That's going to be brutal. <laughs> I mean, I'm always the one who scrambles for the Smash Ball, and to know that I went for the wrong one and the other one's on the other side of the screen and someone else has it, that's going to be fun. No, 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 Exactly. Um, I was excited to see a little bit more of the Octo expansion for Splatoon. Um, Ninjala looked interesting. It looked like Splatoon with ninjas. <laughs> it did kind of look explosive with ninjas. Yeah, didn't it? It really did. Um, <laughs> I'm excited to see SNK Heroines and uh, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate coming to the Switch. I don't even know if those were new announcements, but I hadn't heard about them yet. I think I think they were confirmed, but just like they're they're being stated again for new yeah. for the Western audience's benefit. Yeah, I'll I'll buy Carcassonne when it comes out because you know board games. Yep. Um, <laughs> And that's it for Nintendo for me, but don't end when we're done with that, because I have two games that weren't in any of the press conferences I want to talk oh, about. Oh, don't, don't worry. We have, we're going we're gonna to wind down with, like, what do we think you know, were the best of, what, what were our favorites, what were we looking forward to the most, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay, just making sure. Don't worry. Well, we have a little bit more to go. Just the, 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 you and Nick going back and forth, were, they were starting to run a little long, so I'm like, all right, I think they got D I'm don't, sorry. don't you apologize. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, just no, 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 no. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> oh. Um. But my feelings, Brian, I need to express my sadness at it running long. Well, we're already like, this is going to be three and a half hours. This is just. Oh, uh, what was Final Fantasy VII, Brian? Uh, Your point is negated. Yeah, I know. Well, that was four. So, <laughs> so, um, do I have anything else for Nintendo? 
I do not. So yeah, let's uh, let's mosey into uh, our 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 last bit of you know etc. Some other games that were not shown at the press conferences. What we're looking forward to, you know, who won E three, quote unquote. So, <laughs> so Ronnie, you just mentioned that you there were some games that were mentioned that were not in uh, any of the press conferences. So, okay. Uh, I'm going to bring up two. I'll start with the one that I doubt many other people have anything to say about, which was Super Meat Boy Forever, if anybody saw that. I did not. No, okay. I didn't. It is a Super Meat Boy Endless Runner. Oh, God! <laughs> but it's not endless. You can't stop running, but it is staged. Like, it is stages, and it's just as difficult as Super Meat Boy is. It looks really, really good, and, like, there's a lot of depth to it. And the stages are semi-randomized, so it has, like, it, you, 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 you can play the same stage in a couple different ways, and it'll come up different each time, so there's a lot of replay value for people who enjoy that. All right. Um, then the one that I'm hoping, even if none of you saw, that we discuss a little bit is a Tunic. Did anybody see Tunic? I saw that. It was cute. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm glad that that's going to... It looks very cute. Yeah. Uh, did you see that, Sean or Brian? No, I, I, did, I did not. I did not, no. Okay. Tunic is a Legend of Zelda clone. It has a distinctive style, though, that, like, definitely looks a bit different than Zelda, but it's still kind of the bright colors and stuff. But the uh, combat mechanics, and I hate comparing it to this because everybody compares everything to it, Kind of reminds me of Dark Souls. Like, you have the rolling and dodging and, like, pixel-perfect mechanics and stuff for it in combat. But it's a 2D Zelda. Where, like, Yeah, it looks really interesting. And, like, just the farther it went, the more I'm like, I'm really digging the game design and, like, the style they chose. So I'm definitely, like... We'll we'll see when they put more out, but for me, I think that's going to be a, a day one buy when it comes out. Well, given that the developer came right out and said that the game was inspired by quote certain classic triangle seeking games, <laughs> we're look I'm look looking for Doritos, Brian. We're looking for Doritos. Yes, you're looking for the Doritos of power, wisdom. <laughs> yes. Well, have I have I? Uh, okay, most of you probably know that I have a. 8-bit Zelda as a tattoo on my shoulder. Um, when we were getting, when me and Deja were getting our tattoos done, because she got Link, the tattoo artist asked us why the pretty lady was wearing a yellow hat. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, get me the Geritol. I t- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was, uh, that was... Interesting. I need, I need to chug. I, I need to chug some Mylanta now. I di- I was I didn't think there was anybody, even non gamers, who weren't at least aware of what the Legend of Zelda was. I'm 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 going to weep now. <laughs> <laughs> so those were the two games that weren't brought up that that weren't shown in the press conferences. They were shown separately. Okay. As individual demos at 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 E three. So. Uh, anyone else? Mm, I think that's it. I ain't mean, got nothing else. All right, Shanna. I think I'm good. You think you're <laughs> now good? Now it's just a matter of waiting for all of these games to come out. Yes, that 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 is now the the, the thing. So, of all the things that we saw during these E3 press conferences, what games are we looking forward to the most? So, whoever wants to go. Don't start with me. I will not start <laughs> with you. Ron or Shanna? I'll, th- I'll start, I'll start, I'll start. Um, Cyberpunk 2077, Tunic, um, Sekiro, Ghost of Tsushima, um, Dragon Quest Eleven, Spider-Man, uh, Last of Us. Uh, 
I think that's it. Still a pretty substantial list. That's that's not bad, Shanna. Brian, do you even need to ask me what game I'm waiting for? Besides the obvious. <laughs> if it even comes out. <laughs> I have faith. I have faith. So besides Kingdom Hearts 3, um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider definitely caught my eye, but it just made me kick myself for saying I still have a nice new shiny copy of Tomb Raider sitting in my living room that I need to do and just do the damn thing. Um, Last of Us, same thing. And, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to Smash as well. Okay. All right. Uh, I will go then, and we'll leave Ronnie last. <laughs> so he can catch his breath for a second. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, Smash, definitely. Uh, I'm looking forward to Octopath Traveler. Uh, I'm looking forward to that too, yeah. I am looking forward to uh, Resident Evil 2. And I am I'm really looking forward to the Ori sequel. I am yeah. really can't wait. As soon as I see that game show up on Steam, that that's a buy. That's a buy. We happy few as well. But I think I just I saw Ori and I was just like and I love you. <laughs> Yeah, my, my list looks kind of similar to yours, Brian. Um, so, uh, for me, it's Ori 2, <laughs> Octopath Traveler, uh, Tunic, and the world ends with you! I, I will definitely, uh, I am also excited for The Last of Us, but I'm not listing it because I still have not finished the first one. Yeah, same. So I need to do that before I can get it. But the other, these four games are ones that I will be picking up on release. Wasn't there a... a I, I'm looking at the full list. There was a Catherine game. Yes, was... yes, there was. Um, it is... I can't remember the full title, it's but... It's Catherine it, Full Body. Full Body, thank you. Uh, Catherine Full Body is a remake of the original Catherine with an entirely new story in, uh, in it. There's a third character you can choose to date... Um, and there's a lot more depth to all of the character stories. And there is a new ending, which supposedly will be the official ending to continue the series. Fair enough. So that, but we, we still need a lot more information on that. Yes. Also, just because I still, I still, this game, these games are just a throwback to childhood I, the, the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy and the Spyro Trilogy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, those those were... A, I was really happy to see the announcement for those, too. Yep. So, so... I'll always be happy to see those coming out. So, uh, in 20 years, are we all gonna play Elder Scrolls Six? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I couldn't even play Skyrim. There's giant spiders in it. That's my one. <laughs> I tried so hard, but... You're never going to be playing a fantasy game ever, Shauna. <laughs> They're I everywhere. know! Why are they in every game? It's and, terrible. They're my weakness. Resident Evil. Uh, that's heartbreaking. I, I hate... I am arachnophobic as well, but I, I suck it up for video games. <laughs> Remind me one day to tell you guys my story about playing Skyrim. <laughs> Remind, <laughs> me, I'm to tell you one day about my story of my cousin putting his pet tarantula on my stomach as a kid. Oh no! While I was sleeping. No, oh, absolutely not. Just, just, just no. I would, I would kill him. <laughs> <laughs> That's where my arachnophobia comes from. Yikes! So, do I, do I need to ask who had had what you thought had the best press conference? Obviously, EA. Nintendo. Oh, oh, oh yes, obviously, <laughs> EA had the best. Oh yes, absolutely, just all hail. So, um. <laughs> I, I said before, for what Microsoft needed to do to try and get sales for them, they had the best conference because they showed both quality and quantity. But all, but pretty much every show other than EA's and Bethesda's, I thought was very good. Okay. I was gonna say I think I think Sony had the best quality just overall. I think Microsoft had the 
best maybe the best blend of the two but i just just straight up nintendo just nintendo had it all that's fair that is absolutely fair i mean nintendo was the one that i paid attention to the most because i am nintendo fanboy also, through and through i'm sorry like despite all the rep the reputation nintendo might have at times <laughs> nintendo had the least gimmicky press conference that's true. That is true because I mean they 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 seem to have because now they've done this for a few years. They've decided to do the Nintendo Direct as opposed to a traditional press conference, and it seems to be working out really well for them. Yeah, and they don't have to like we're gonna get another Nintendo Direct in what three months, and we'll see more of these titles. Like we don't have to wait a full year to see more. They're showing us what they're ready to show us right now, and we'll see more as it gets closer to release for these games. Right. So. Start saving your money now, people. Because <laughs> some of these games are coming out within 6 to 12 months, and good. Um, the Switch the Switch needs games, and it's getting them. It's absolutely getting them. So, unless anyone has anything else more to say about this year's E3, I'm going to put this to bed. I'm good. Oh, I forgot that... one more game that I need to add to my list to get. Beyond Good and Evil 2. That is also on my list. Um, but beyond that, yeah, I'm good. I hate. I, I dread to ask Ronnie. Do you have anything more that you want to add to the? Uh... Uh, I already said no. I have nothing to add. Oh, I'm I'm shocked. All right, good. So, if any of you out there on the wide world of the internet have any questions, comments, thoughts about E3, this episode, or any other episode of downloadable content, you can let us know. Uh, we're on Facebook and Twitter. You can send us feedback on the website by clicking at the feedback button, dlcpodcast.com. You can hear every single episode there, as well as iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, and Google Play Music. So... The thunderous typing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my fault. <laughs> that one I will let you apologize for. <laughs> so all that remains for me to do then is to thank Ron, Ronnie, Shanna, and Nick for being on this very long episode. Uh, Ronnie, I hope that all of our listeners were glued to their seats. Not a single one moved, except for that one, but he doesn't move anymore. <laughs> oh no <laughs> I'm a little scared to figure out what you did or do I not want to know I don't want to know I, I don't you, play, know. you played the Resident Evil you can take a guess I can Brian, Brian two words plausible deniability yes absolutely <laughs> absolutely so on that fun note I am Brian and have a good one everybody